first of all, um, congratulations to Duke. I think John has done a really good job with his team. Uh, I don't know if that was 15 or 16 uh, wins at home, but that's pretty impressive to go undefeated um, at home in the year. And, you know, you look at that team, they've grown so much. Uh, I remember when we played them, I don't know, months ago. And, um, you know, they play like freshmen, and you can tell that those guys have really grown up. And it was a great game. Uh, you know, I thought um, we fought through a lot of adversity. Uh, we had a couple of our starters that I didn't think played well. Man, but the fight in our team is so great. Um, you know, obviously, you look up, and you know, I just told them, keep fighting. And then I think with maybe 40 seconds left, it was a one-point, I mean, one-possession game. And so proud of our guys. Um, I told them in the locker room, you know, uh, we've had a really, really good season, regular season, 22 wins and 12 conference wins. And there's so much to be proud of. And we have to turn our attention to, uh, obviously, the ACC tournament. So questions? Kevin, even, even though you lost this game, is this something you think you can build on going to Greensboro? Because you have a lot of quite time to build on. Yeah, you know what? It's uh, you you would rather learn a lesson through a win, but uh, you know we it's it's all you can always take something from the game, and you know for us, you know we got a little bit of time. You know I think we're the only team that don't play. I know we're the only team that don't play Saturday, so you know we have to have a good balance between. Um, Working on some stuff, getting a little rest, taking care of bodies, and uh, growing from everything. Kevin, what do you think was going on with the way they defended for Quavion, or maybe why he didn't get going from the, from the field? Yeah, I think I think they're just doing a good job. You know, when you know he's such an elite scorer, and a lot of times, um, you know, people <laughs> are more face guarding and sitting in gaps and making it tough for him to get the basketball. And you know, I think that a lot of teams are trying to be really physical with him. And so some of those things, and you know, he's been you know, one of the things we got to clean up with him is he's been off the court for most for the last three or four games because he's picking up two fouls in the second half and something I in the first half, so he's not allowed to play. So we got to do a better job of him not fouling. Seems like he's getting frustrated a little bit more easily doing games. Things not going his way. How do you kind of keep him or try to keep him? Calm? I, I think he'll be fine. Like, I, I don't worry about him. You know, I, I, he's frustrated because he's a good player, and that's it. I don't think it's anything to do with his team, but good players like to play well, and scores like to score. So, you know, when he when he's not scoring, I think he's upset with himself about not doing a better job. You're 12 and three in ACC games where you score at least seven. Of course, usually you score more than that. What made it so difficult to get into your preferred tempo tonight? I thought the tempo was really good. It was just, you know, um, it's weird because the it was similar to the first game. Both teams really defended. If you remember, even though we jumped out to an early lead, man, it was it was like a low scoring game at first. It was the same thing here. It kind of went back and forth. We never really got going. I think both teams missed shots early, and then I think it, we kind of loosened up. Uh, Jock Jock Jonah really got us going, and then I thought we played off of that. You know, we had our moments. Uh, we cut it. We cut it to two to four, and then. Obviously, they went up 10. It was a game of runs. And, you know, if I could have asked, if we were playing an NBA game, maybe I had a few extra more time and we could have maybe won the game, but we didn't. DJ was 4 or 5 in the first half and 2 or 10 in the second half when they double teamed and so forth. How difficult is that team to play with all the size they have? Well, they got great size. I mean, but DJ's a big guy and he scores the basketball. I was bagging now. I was like, they when they started trapping, I was like, man, it's got to be some contact. You got you got three big bodies, three long, athletic, seven foot guys, and you know DJ at his size. I was like, give me something because it's a lot of contact. But they did a good job with their length. They made him shoot over left. Uh, they brought the right double, the double teams at the right time. Kevin, you're the master at tuning out social media and everybody else. <laughs> How do you handle the next? week or so while you see your name on the bubble now and a lot of people will say maybe you're not in the tournament. Yeah, I don't I don't control it. And I, I don't I don't think that we're on the bubble. I mean if you I, you know everybody I've talked to we've been an eight nine seed. If you lose the Duke by four at Duke and you go to the bubble then man we ain't got we never got a chance. <laughs> Do you need to explain that to your players though so they don't Overreact to whatever they get the next week. I think so. they're going to be fine. We talked about that. I mean, we, I don't know, uh, Joe, where everybody's got it listed, but if you have to apologize for losing a quad one road, a quad one win on the road, and you drop from where everybody got us predicted to on the bubble, then we got no chance. We'll, we'll never make it. Over the yeah. last six games, Darkell has 26 points in four of them. How big has he been for this team all season long, but 
especially over these last several games? He's been great. I mean, I, you know, I listen. I thought we hit a home run with him. I knew it when we got him as a person. Um, and and I'll, I'll say this as a person, he's unbelievable. Um, better person than basketball player. But man, he's been so huge for us. He's played um, he's played as an all-conference guy, first team, second team, all-conference guy down the stretch. And he's made big plays. And you know, most guys, when they went down early, probably wouldn't have came back in the game. And we couldn't keep him out of the game. And so he's been huge for our team, uh, both on both ends of the floor, and uh, been a floor, uh, our floor general, and kind of one of the heart and soul of our team. So I'm, I'm proud and glad that we got him. Kevin, yeah, you were talking about two swing on defense. They're also plus nine on the boards. You talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I just man, they, we we went into the game. I think uh, Duke and us are number one and two in offensive rebounding. And, man, we couldn't give them credit. I thought they did a great job. I, I think lively. Um, I think two guys had seven and a half, and you know, they did a great job offensive rebounding the ball, and we didn't do so well blocking them out. Jack gave you 13 and seven game, and I just how able he Jack, Jack was good. I mean, you know, we we didn't know uh, Chip. I wanted to wait to he kind of went through um, you know kind of a pregame to see if he was going to be able to play. Uh, he did practice a little bit yesterday, and you know, just to have him <laughs> on the floor gives us another score. You know, especially during the you know towards the end of the season right now, and he's been good for. He's our best rebounder, so we need to have him on the floor and his ability to score the basketball. The things that you see in the fight back, a minute and a half, you down, I think nine, and then you almost got it, almost uh, squared up. Well, that's our team. I mean, these these guys, like I, I love this team. I love the grit on them. Uh, you know, we just you know we refuse to give up. Uh, I, I just you know I told them just keep hanging around. It was very similar almost. To when we were at Wake Forest, and we didn't take the lead to the last five minutes, but Duke got up so much we didn't have enough to get back into it. But I got just fight. Um, you know, there's no, you know, we can lose a game, and if we lose a t lose a game, the team's gonna really beat us. But it's not because we lay down and we don't fight. Yeah. And this is fresh serve. Just your thoughts, 22 and eight, the whole thing, and the pride you have. What, what do you think about this season? Oh man, I, I am I'm tickled. Um, you, you look at what we went through last year, and it was, uh, for me, personally, the toughest season of my life. I uh, never really went through a losing season. And uh, I have to give, you know, our administration, uh, you know, Boo Corrigan and uh, Chancellor Randy Woodson, um, they understood uh, the challenges and the hurdles that I had to go through to get to where we had and the reason for the season last year. Uh, that being said, it was really up to me. I kind of looked myself in the mirror, as I always do, and try to figure out how can I get better? Uh, how can I help our team get better? How can I help NC State get better? And, you know, we just, I made some changes. Um, I swallowed some pride. Um, I was bothered. I didn't sleep at all. And I wanted to get this program back on track. You know, we started off our first three years with um, 20 wins and, you know, um, 11 and 7 and 9 and 9 and 10 and 10 and, and never really had a losing record in the ACC. And so what I decided to do is just bury my head to Joe's point. I really don't listen to social media. I never listened to anybody that said, you know, whatever they were going to say. What I did was we went out and I got a new staff with a lot of energy who've done a tremendous job. Uh, we went out and we found needs and we got John Kelly Joyner and DJ Burns and Deshaun Mahorshi and Jack Clark. And then guys like the Quigley and Smith decided to come back to school with Casey Morsell. And, and you look at it a year later, man, what a difference a year has made um, because we didn't give up and we didn't put our head down and we just fought. So I'm happy. Uh, this is probably one of the happiest moments that I've had in a long time with a team to be sitting with 22 wins and 12 wins in the conference. And uh, I don't take it for granted. That's a really important thing. And, uh, I know winning is important, but had a lot of people that stood behind me. Um, I had a lot of people praying for me, and I appreciate them for doing that. Given the history of the Coliseum, has it added significance to the tournament being in Greensboro? I love Greensboro. I mean, I know I know we have some coaches in the league that don't want it in Greensboro. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying who they are, <laughs> but I love Greensboro. I think, it's, I think it's a great place. It's the original, to me, the home of the ACC. Uh, it's an easy drive for us. Uh, it's a great venue. I think people come out and watch it. And uh, 
I don't know when it's scheduled to come back to Greensboro, but I hope it does. You haven't lost there. <clears throat> Still carrying that from last year. Is that right? Oh, yeah. I knew Joe. Things, things shut down, but last game you won. Thank you. See, I didn't even listen. Well, he's we, wrong, so don't worry about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we lost to Syracuse and COVID. Two years ago. Yeah. Come on, Joe. <laughs> 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 hey, boy, <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is why I answer the questions and I don't give statements like that. <laughs> Everybody needs an editor. We're good. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.